Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, you've got clothes hangers, aircraft hangers, but shoe hangers? Come on, let's take a look. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today, we're going to be making the hangers for the brake shoes. So the brake shoes I've got here, made these many moons ago when I made the uh, brake shoes for the tender and today we need to make the hangers that go, oh, go on to the supports that we made in the last video. These will be hanging there, of course the other way up and the frames are the right way around of course. And each one of these we've got four to do so I've already got the material cut and I've got one already set up in the mill. Uh, each one of these needs three holes in it, got the trusty little drawing out the back and then we've got some shaping to do so in this video there'll be hole drilling some milling getting these to shape and then we've got the corners and bits and pieces all to round off and make neat and tidy so that's a bit of uh, work on the belt linisher but i'll show you the setup in the mill and we'll get these holes drilled 12 in all because each one of these gets three in each all right guys so moving across to the mill you can see i've got part number one in the uh, in the mill vise, worked out for myself that these holes go quite close along that back edge. Now my parallels for the vise aren't very thin. So I had a scratch around and a scratch of the head and I've got a whole bunch of these 12 inch steel rulers. They were a back to school sale years ago. And um, grabbed them off the shelf, had a quick measure, found two that are the same height. That one just fell over, just need to pull that back up to make sure it stays in support of everything. There we go. That's it. That's a bit of a tap, a bit more of a tap down. Not that these parts are great accurately, ac needing great accuracy, so it's perfectly fine as it is. It'll probably settle down once I start pushing the drill through it. But the point is they're very thin. So one at that side, one at this side is doing more than it is needed to actually support them. They're not going to drop through. Uh, we've got to drill six millimeter holes. Got the center drill in the chuck ready to go, six millimeter drill in the hand. We're going to go straight through, one here, one bit further down, one almost at the end. But that's only going to leave me three mil along that back edge. Now my parallels are thicker than that, and I'm not going to risk that, risk running a drill into them because they're hardened, and that would one mess up the drill, mess up the part, and most more importantly, mess up the parallel. So using the steel rules, it's accurate enough for what this part is. Uh, parallels, of course, are down to whatever. Depends on how much you want to pay for them. They're down to the thousandth of an inch or the zero of the thousandth of a millimeter, or even down to a micron of a whatever a micron is. So let me get this all set up in position, get you onto the tripod, and I'll get back to you very shortly. Right, here we go. Okay, guys, got you set up on the tripod now. So piece is now in the vise. Center drill, going to make my first center drill. I'm going to go through with a four mil, then a six mil just to make life easy. And uh, then it's ditto repeato a bit further down this way. And then the last one down this end. Now I'm only gonna do the one. I'm gonna go off camera, do the rest and I'll bring you back. All right, here goes.
There we go, guys. So I've just got 11 more to do, then I'll bring you back. It's as easy as that. Okay, guys, so all 12 holes are drilled. Yeah, so you can see three holes in each one. Now I'm faced with a different problem. I had to think about this for a second or two. Because, of course, on these centers, these two end ones, there needs to be a six millimeter radius curve created to make things look tidy. And on this one, on this side, there just needs to be a slightest amount of a 10 millimeter radius curve. But of course, I've just drilled away my centers. Right, so a bit of thinking, just done a very quick few minutes on the lathe. I've basically turned up a six millimeter pin with a 12 millimeter head on it, which can go in there. And that goes on that end as well. This is then a six millimeter pin with a 20 millimeter head, and that goes on there. So what I can do now, using my scriber, you can probably see the end result in these ones. You can see all those nice scratch silver lines, but anyway, so I just need to follow the curves because I know the, they're right. Yep, can, I can see that one, and this one in here. Just enough to give me a line to Grind two, file two, whichever I decide to do. I think I've said before I'm not dead, dead keen on filing, so it's probably going to be the belt finisher. All right, that's that end. Get this end done. Spin it round. Here we go. It's almost, I suppose you could call these like a radius button or marking out button or something like that. Nothing uh, dramatic, too, really, really too dramatic. Now, now I've got those that curve, that curve, and this curve, and I can just try and draw while you can see a tangent line between that curve there and the top of that curve there. It's okay, and then the same on the other end. Fortunately for me, on only one side needs shaping. There we go. Yep. So, as you can see there and these ones, that's the basic shape of the shoe hanger. The shoe itself mounts to that hole there. This one mounts to the locomotive on the pins we made in the last video. And this one goes to the operating mechanism, so you've got a bit of uh, mechanical advantage to apply lots of pressure to the brakes on the loco. Uh, right, now another thought occurred to, occurred to me is oh, I've got either a lot of hacks, I've got to either cut that off and file it clean. But I thought, well, I'd rather use the milling machine. I know it seems a long way of doing it, but hey, that's me. So I actually dawned that if I actually reverse those around, put the 6 volt mill in there and the 12 mill in there, and rest those on the top of the jaws in the mill vise, I'll just get you over here now. All right, let's move you. Zoom out a bit. There we go, and I'll tip you up. There we go. If I rest those and hold them tight down, if you imagine that this is the mill vise, I can then pop those out. That mill vise is now nice and tight. And if I hold that ruler there, you can see that that line is actually parallel. So by using the buttons to mark the curves and then swapping them over, I've then got this line parallel to the vice jaw, which of course when it's in the mill vice on the, on the milling machine, means it's parallel to the table, which means I can just very lightly, because this is sticking up, I know it's five mil thick, it'll, it'll still vibrate the hell, I'm probably sure of that one. So I can then just mill that off. And then of course I do the other three, so I've got four with that bit missing. And then I'm gonna do the other end, so it tips up that way. And again, this will be flapping in the air by then, there'll only be a little bit older, so really light cuts. Put that up, up and down a few times till I get to that line. This will be a little bit of filing just to take off what will eventually be just a little bit of a point here. And I might like it that way, so I might actually leave it. Uh, and then I've got minimal filing or the belt grinder and the garage to round off the ends to make it look pretty. Right, so I'm going to stop this video, this part of the video, and I'll get set up in the mill and we'll see if this idea works. Okay, so now here's the setup now actually in the mill vise. I put the buttons in from the back, so they're resting on the 
fixed jaw, so because this flops around a bit until you tighten it down, and then it's probably never in the same place twice. So I can now take those buttons out. There we go. It's nice and the vice is nice and tight. And I can just very gently go until I get down to the line. So I'll, I'll show you the first cut. Nothing too serious on that one. Uh, so I think I probably need to come out a little bit this way. So it's not really clattering too hard onto it. Still going to be pretty hard, but never mind. Are you still in view? Yep, you are. Good. And uh, we'll get this done. All that so you can hear me right so i've touched off and i go oh let's go let's go point two so you, you, you could hear it vibrating so i'm just going to take light cuts and i've got a, got a bit of uh, spray lubrication for it as well so we'll see how this goes You get the idea. So I'm going to stop this part of the video now. And I'll get this down to the line and I'll get you back. Right, guys. So now with just one little cut left, just here, I'm almost at the line, just underneath that little bit of a burr there. As you can see, that angle has turned out really nice. Nice clean cut. Just going to make the last cut now, but I thought I'd get you back just to show this. And then I'll get the other three done as well. And I will then also do this angle the same way. So that's the six millimeters pin with the 20, the 10, the 20 millimeter disc on the back. And this one is the six millimeter pin with a 12 millimeter pin, uh, disc on the back. All right, guys, let's do this cut. And uh, then I can stop the, this part of the video and I'll get the others done and get you back after that. All right, might get a bit noisy. There we go guys, easy as that. Went backwards and forwards a few times. I've worked my way up to a 0.4 millimeter cut. This is a 50 mil end mill with seven inserts. And I was running at 324, 325 RPM. 
Right, oh guys, I'll get the other ones done and the other angles. So that's another set of seven angles to cut, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so that's all eight angles done, all four pieces done. Now all I have to do is just nip over to the belt linisher, follow the scribe lines on the ends, as you can see there. You can see the scribe marks here, 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 and round those off, and then just put a bit of a smooth up bit out too. And I'm also going to run these unmachined faces. Uh, a quick grind on the belt grinder just to clean them up, get all that muck off, and that'll make them ready for priming. Okay, off to the belt grind, belt linisher. Back soon. There we go, guys. Four pieces cleaned up a little bit, all nicely rounded off, all the right shape, all all the lumps and bumps taken off. Right, that's it. Right, oh guys, four more bits done. Looking really nice. I'm quite happy with those. They'll go onto the frames eventually, but they'll get paint, spray painted, primed, and everything else before they do. All right, guys, I'll finish this off now. So if you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications, it would be greatly appreciated. Other than that, this is the chef signing out and saying, see you later.